<laughs> Negative Ghost Rider, the past full. When does that movie come out? We gotta go see that. You tell them about the Twinkie. What about the Twinkie? <laughs> oh my god. No! Get those words! Look at that. We got Vacation D back in the house. The guy goes on vacation, but he still works. He's still here coming at us from, uh, what is it, Epstein Island or something like that. I don't even know what you people are doing down there. Uh, I, I heard you bought the island. It was on um, It was on Pedophile Island, uh, what was that, uh, dot .com or something like That's that. That's right. I, just I, put it on the, I put it on the Underhills American Express card. Want the number? Nice. Very nice. Okay, good job. All right. Got all your money down there in the Caymans. Uh, you're looking quite like it. Uh, well, hey, uh, we're going to have you back in stateside here soon. But uh, right. So this will be the last show of the week for everybody, um, unless I get a co-host for tomorrow to do kind of like a surprise show tomorrow. Uh, yeah. But uh, but you're going to be traveling. So, uh, But this is BitNerds. Yeah. Welcome to BitNerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast <laughs> auction sites. Michael Deeb over there. That's uh, Vacation Deeb. I should have changed the Chiron to say that uh, funny. Uh, Vacation <laughs> Deeb. That would have been uh, yeah. good, but I did not. Anyways, my name is John Fulman. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, hey, if you haven't hit that subscribe, like, or notification button, now's the time to do it. Uh, today, I wanted to start off the show. If, you, if you're if you a fan of the show, if you're someone who watches regularly, we really, really appreciate you guys. Um, and we're, you know, you, you guys know, uh, you guys are kind of the early adopters, right? We're a new channel. Uh, we're just kind of like getting geared up. And we could really use your help getting the word out there. So I want to, we don't have bid nerds hats yet, but we still, I have some, some Durfasa nation hats. And a lot of you guys are also fans. It's of a cool swag. Very it's, cool it's swag. It's really, it's a really good hat. Um, High quality snapback, frato brim, uh, mm-hmm. as the professor likes to say, flat brim. That's Japanese for flat brim. Frato brim. Um, I take it on his authority as an English uh, professor that uh, that is the case. Uh, anyways, uh, what I want to do is I want to throw a challenge down to you guys today. Uh, you know what we do is we pick the most interesting cars of the day, uh, and we nerd out about those cars uh, on the auction sites. But then we hit the, ru- the where the rubber hits the road is when we make our predictions. We say, all right, here is what we think these cars will sell for. What we want you guys to do is to go in the comments below today and bid on all five cars along with us so go down there and give us your bids when we get to the cars of the day yeah. we want you to give us the bid your bids for the day and whoever whoever anybody i'm serious anyone who beats us today uh in the get comments swag. is like get swag i'm gonna send you a yeah. free hat uh so if you put a comment down below that says hey uh here are my five cars here's the bid you got to do it before the show ends though you can't nice. wait till the show is over and then go watch the watch the <laughs> auctions end and you know get five yahtzees that ain't happening right yeah. um but yeah, uh, so put your bids in there and we'll get you a hat. And that's uh, and we're going to get some bid nerds hats and we're going to do stuff like that more often. Another thing that I really want to do, and I'm kind of excited about this idea, Deep. Let me tell, tell me what you think of this. We are going, uh-huh. we're going on the fly here this morning. Uh, all these car, all our audience, there are other nerds out there. You guys know there are other nerds like us, right? You're <laughs> our people. We're all nerds. If you're listening to my voice, you're a nerd. And that's okay because we embrace nerdism. Um, yeah. The other nerds that don't know about us need to know about this show. And we think the best place for them to find out about it isn't for you to share it on Facebook or go out and tell everybody what you should do anyway. Uh, What you should do is go on the comments section of Bring a Trailer. Go on the comments sections of Cars and Bids and P Car Market and any and, and Rad for Sale. And anytime we talk about a car, go mention that in the comment section below those cars. So if we talk about an '89 Fox Body Mustang on on Bring a Trailer, go in there and say, "Hey guys, the bid nerds are talking 
about yeah. the 89 Fox body Mustang. Um, we can't Please. do it because, you know, we'll get kicked off the platform <laughs> because that's self-promotion. But you guys can do it. You guys are, you guys are also fans. That you, they want that kind of interaction. So please go on to the comment section of your favorite auction site. And when we talk about one of the cars that's on their site, please let all the other yeah. commenters and Blow people who are watching those things know. Blow uh, yeah. we, that, we have found that that's yeah. what gets the most attention over here. We've seen a few people mention stuff over there and it just brings a ton of people, a ton of views over here. So please help us out. Uh, sorry, I'll stop begging. This isn't NPR. Uh, we're not asking for money. Uh, we're not saying that, uh, hey, we're going to give money to dolphins or any of that kind of crap. We <laughs> just want more nerds to watch the show. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. boy. And then, uh, and then we'll develop our Patreon. <laughs> Yeah, right. Eventually we'll have a Patreon account and you can give us money. Look, you can go to the Patreon account, I think, and give us money. Um, yeah. There's no, like, you just put money in there. Look, any money that you put in the Patreon account, we're just going to use to promote the show. We, you yeah. know, clearly we don't make any money doing this, so we have jobs uh, or something closer resembling them. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, we, uh, we love doing the show. We love doing it five days a week. Your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day. So let's get to not the cars today. You know, if you're, if you're a nerd and you watch the show, you know, we always we start out every show by checking our predictions from the day before. Can you beat Michael Deeb and I? Let's find out today. Uh, let's see if, if you would have beat it. I know somebody yet. in Santa Cruz who can, JP. We had I a third we, nerd, yeah. Yeah, I think we should nickname Skelton uh, Lane Yahtzee. Like, just start calling him Yahtzee. That was I awesome. I think he, he got he his first Yahtzee. Yeah, yes, he's he did. He's pretty excited. He absolutely yeah. did, that guy. Oh, my God. Uh, JP, we had a really uh, fun group of cars yesterday. At least they were fun to me because I got to pick them all. Huh. Um, but we started off on P-Car Market to see if they could sell this pastel yellow 1990 300ZX twin turbo that had, like, I can't remember, JP. It was, like, 3,300 miles on it. This thing yeah. was basically brand new. And so we were all wondering, you know, what would be the blue sky above a car of this nature? The equipment, the unusual paint, the low miles versus peak art market, which is a, you know, hot and cold site as far as having some success and then sometimes having, you know, unmistakable failures uh, with regards to selling cars for the consigners. And this not even being a Porsche, this being a completely Japanese car from a different era. So... Betting against the platform, I said forty-five thousand for the car, but that the car might be worth sixty. Uh, it, the three of us kind of echoed that same sentiment. You went forty-three thousand dollars, and Lane went forty-two. P car market got the got a bid of forty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, but it failed to sell at that price, and the car is sitting in the deal tank for fifty-seven thousand five hundred. Uh, which again is close to what I thought that the car should bring being like 60 grand retail for that car. Uh, and I agree with you and Lane that if this car were on BAT, it wouldn't be surprised if this car brought 80 or 85,000 because it had the super high kiss uh, suspension. It had the cloth seats. It had the pastel yellow, super low miles, twin turbo, manual transmission. I mean, this is literally the car everybody would want from that era. Really neat example. It's still available. You can go swoop it up from the deal tank. But again, P car market failed to bring the money that that car deserved by the close of the hammer, by the close of auction. So what do you think, JP? Yeah, I, we, I we, mean, we were kind of all over that one, weren't we? Yeah, you know, and this is consistent with P car markets failures. Um, a lot of people, I think what is going on right now is that P car market, like we've said in the past, is really a used car dealership. Um, they sell <laughs> high end used cars, uh, but they can get your car to market very quickly. <laughs> And it's very it, it frustrating. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they will like send out a couple of guys to your house and be like, you better list this car. I mean, they are from Long Island. They are old school used car guys like through and through. So, it, you know, whereas best. BAT is like, hey, we have a million cars here, man. You're just going to have to get in yeah. line. It takes you totally. a month or more to get your car on BAT. And I think a lot of people are getting frustrated with that. They're like, <clears throat> well, man, what the heck? They call P Market and they're like, "Yeah, man, yo, we'll sell you a car, no problem." Oh, it's a Datsun. Does it look like a Ferrari? Sure, we'll sell it. Um, and <laughs> we're not kidding. The highest selling not Nissan kidding, yeah. uh, on P Car Market Datsun, was yeah. a, a, was a really, really bad Ferrari clone. It was a Datsun two eighty. You, you know what, JP? That's a great take. That car brought more money than this three hundred ZX twin turbo with three thousand right? miles. Yeah, yeah, more money. Yeah. 
So, oh, yeah, you know, nice. uh, th this is just, you know, if you want to sell your specialty car, you have a car that's like this, that's really amazing. And again, Lane, you know, mentioned it, the terrible photography. This is something, this is a special car and it deserves special treatment. Uh, this car should have been photographed really, really well. And these photographs aren't awful. I mean, they're, they're doing the job, but they're just not special. They just, there's no romance here. They're just right. shots, you know, in an empty parking lot or something like that. Uh, so, you know, but a car like this has some provenance. I mean, if this were on rad for sale, oh my God, it would have just been, I mean, look at what they sold a, a 250,000 mile uh, base Supra for normally you know, aspirated Supra. Yeah. yeah for, I mean, for $30,000. Right. Know, so, what would yeah, this, this have car, done? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. This car would have been six 60 to 80 grand easy on rad for sale, which is, which is yeah. amazing. So it's a shame that this consigner chose this platform because I think it, it's hurting his chances of achieving full retail potential. Yeah. Cause car. now the car is kind <laughs> of burned in a certain Excuse sense. Me. If it goes over to BAT, the to guy degree, waits, yeah. yeah, he's going to go over there and everyone's like, ah, oh, well it only made this much on P car market. And it's, it's really going to hurt him in the, in the future. Uh, this car shouldn't, you should look, if you have a special <laughs> car and you want to sell it, be patient. Just, just wait, get it on BAT, go <laughs> jump through the hoops and, or, you know, rad for sale can get you on pretty quick. If it's a car that makes sense, rad for sale will get you on and they'll plug the heck out of you. And it's the right platform, especially for something yeah. like this. Don't fall for the P car market. Don't be P car markets. Next big failure. They failed to sell a singer. A dang Singer yeah. 911. If they yeah. can't sell a Singer 911, that would have been the biggest feather in their cap if they could have made that happen. Uh, yeah. But now it's like, oh gosh, Picard Market, you guys are just miserable. What a bunch <laughs> of losers. Um, uh, just All right, JP, deal. let's jump over to Doug DeMiro's thanks. Yeah. <laughs> he had this 1997 Audi A6 Avant from Fairview, Pennsylvania, a car dealership out there in Pennsylvania. And this car had 49,000 original miles. It had the beautiful pearl white paint, but the drivetrain was almost garbage. Normally aspirated 2.8 liter V6 with a quattro all wheel drive system running through a four speed slush box automatic. Uh, at the very least, this car needed its bumpers painted, but you know, it, as, as far as being super low miles, it was not in as new condition. Uh, I was the high man when I said $8,500. You and Lane were in the sevens. You said $7,200. Lane said $7,500. Uh, <clears throat> Deep knows how many for some reason. This car brought $9,500 and sold. So I got that one right. Uh, I will just go back to what I said to you at the very beginning of that listing. That car is absolutely Doug DeMiro's. Like that is his happy camping ground, right? Yeah. Under ten grand for a largely new you know, pseudo luxury European car. I mean, that's, that's his house. That's where he lives. And, uh, and that, that, that result doesn't surprise me. I think that was the right platform for that car. And, um, uh, we'll come back to that. Yeah, you're probably right. You know, the thing I got to hand it to Doug DeMiro though, uh, <laughs> is that I don't know if he watches the show, uh, but it no. seems like he might be listening because it used to be that, uh, when you went to the individual photos on, um, cars and bids, there was no way to go to full screen. And if you guys have been watching the show for a while, you might remember, uh, I'd be yeah. sitting here kind of like zooming in and it'd be slightly off center trying to get the yeah, whole yeah. picture in there, but now they've got a full screen function. So I'm sure that's because Doug DeMiro watches our show every day Absolutely. religiously Lisa's, and is going, Lisa's we know his interns do for sure. All yeah. interns love bid nerds. All yeah. interns at all the auction sites are huge, huge bid nerd. They are the nerd herd if ever there was one, and they fixed it. So uh, Doug DeMiro, Cars and Bids 3.0, thumbs up. You guys are doing much better. <laughs> Getting better. Now just uh, get a little bit more selective and uh, stringent yeah. on the photos, and you now guys have yourself bouncer. a platform. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. RJP, we'll go over to BAT. I picked a car just for you because I love mm. you. It's a 1973 Citroen SM with the Maserati 3 liter V6. These cars only make 175 horsepower. They are not quick, but they are fast. This car is actually good for about 140 miles per hour. Uh, really interesting little uh, tidbit. The, this French uh, masterpiece is just from a bygone era. They don't make cars like this. Completely distinctive. Um, you know what? Now that I'm saying this, like on the cuff, I don't know that if they ever sold these cars legally in the U.S. I, I don't think remember the two doors they, being here. Yeah, I think that they did, but I'm not positive. I know that uh, who one of the Eagles sang about one of these songs in in uh, in one of his early songs. Anyway, whatever. Never mind. Uh, moving on. This car seemed to be languishing, so I said forty grand. JP, you went 
thinking this car should have a late flurry. You said 45 grand. Lane uh, was the most pessimistic of this car. He said 32. Remember, our car was at like $23,000 um, when we were reviewing it. I don't think our car got another bid, JP. Mm. It, it closed and failed to sell at $23,855. I must confess, Vacation Deep did not read the whole ad. I'm. We must be missing something that was buried in a lower paragraph that wasn't in the main paragraph because by all accounts, this should be a $40,000, $50,000 car. And if it was in spectacular condition, he's bringing $80,000. Anyway, Lane got that one, although I'm closer between you and I, but that was Lane's first win of the day. Uh, staying on Bring a Trailer, JP, let's look at the Mercedes. It was a 1979 Mercedes-Benz 450 SLC 5 liter. And uh, Lane and I kind of got into it um, because I think he b believed that this was a rebadged 500. And I don't know that they ever brought a 500 SLC to the United States. So this was, in fact, I am positive that I was correct. This is a 450 SLC that uh, chucked the 4.5 liter V8 in favor of the 5 liter V8 that has an aluminum block and more power. We're talking 240 horsepower and 300 pound foot of torque. That is like a truck engine from from the early 2000s. I mean, that is a that's a that's a beast of a motor for a car that only weighs 3,300 pounds. Uh, really neat car, although it drives like a three-speed automatic. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, <laughs> three-speed automatic transmission. But this is all that equipment was a homologation special. Mercedes-Benz built this car for the road on the European continent just so they could take those parts and race them in uh, rallying. Uh, and we're not talking like the World Rally Championship that are sprint races. These are like the long, you know, from one continent to another rallies. Uh, and these cars were very successful in the mid-1970s. So a really neat car with some really neat beats. Limited slip differential, you know, alloy wheels. They had uh, aluminum uh, deck lids and, and rear trunk. Uh, just neat stuff, and we never see these cars very often in the U.S. This one was rough. Let's not let's not mistake it here. This car had some miles on it. It was rough, but it had the right motor. It had the right cloth interior, uh, and it'd be a neat car to bring back, spend a little money on, and 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 bring it, you know, to a shine, and drive it for a little while. So I thought this car might have a late flurry. I said twenty six. JP, you were uh, on the under at 24, and Lane came in under you at 23, and he was the right. Uh, so this was yours and Lane's to, to chew up. So $19,250, and it sold at that price. Car didn't even bring 20 grand. So despite me fawning all over this thing for how cool and unusual it was from the 1970s, uh, nobody really loved this car. So Lane got that one, but you were the closer of the two of us. And our last car of the day was an E36 M3, a 1998 coupe in metallic black with Vader seats and a manual transmission and reasonable miles. JP, this car only had 70-something thousand miles on it. But you guys looked at it really closely while we were reviewing it on air yesterday. Uh, and when you got to the end of the bucket of photos, they opened up the trunk and we saw that huge uh, JL subwoofer. And you and Lane were like, I'm out. <laughs> Forget it. This car's a junk. And Lane changed his bid. So I said 22. Lane had said 18.5, changed his bid to 17. And you took the old 18.5 bid. And Lane got a Yahtzee. I mean, talk about Nostradamus. Uh, he changed his bid in real time and then and changed it to a Yahtzee. The car failed to sell at 17,000, but at least he got it right. Uh, so, uh, anyways, I chalked up two wins. Lane chalked up three, but you got two of those, and I got one of them. So there you go. Lane got a Yahtzee, and now he won't do the show anymore. He's quitting while he's ahead. Smart man. Maybe maybe we should have done the same thing, uh, yeah. or at least that's something we get in a lot of the comments. All right, that was uh, that yeah. was yesterday's cars. Yeah, we don't <laughs> usually allow for on the fly bid changes. I mean, that's kind of the move. Is that once you I pulled speak, it once or twice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once you speak the number, that's it. You have to live with it. Um, yeah, but, it's on uh, the internet. You can't we it. allowed him to change it, and he got the Yati and spanked us. So it's all and then good. Walked hook. off the show. Walked yeah, off we set. we do appreciate you, uh, Lane. Thank you so much for uh, helping us guest host. Uh, while Vacation Deeb was out uh, drinking pina coladas, um, yeah. even though he popped in to be part of the show every now and then. All right, so that was yesterday's cars. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. Uh, like we said at the top of the show, give us your bids in the comments below. Um, the bit, Whoever bids on the five cars today and beats either one of us gets a free Derfossa Nation hat. You can either get the Frato Brim hat, or I think I have some dad hats in there. So if you want a dad hat oh. instead, you can get a dad <laughs> hat and, you know, whatever, we don't judge. Uh, yes, we do. And yes, we do. 
We've Absolutely, we market. do. We, totally <laughs> judge we definitely that. judge. Uh, even, you know, peak our market. We'd love to give you guys some hats. We'll get you guys. Some. Oh my god! We should get. We should when we get bid nerd hats. We should send just the first batch of bid nerd hats to to uh, just the whole peak our market. <laughs> Everybody in the office, you get a hat. Yeah. You get a hat. Poker, poker chips from Circus Circus, <laughs> sourdough bread from uh, the Fisherman's Wharf, and a bunch yes. of bid nerds and DF swag, and just send it to them and say, "We love you guys." I could just see him opening the box, like, what's in the box? Yeah. And just their their Long Island long faces, just like, oh, this is crap. Gosh. Yeah, no, they won't like that. They won't like that. What's That'll the white fun. We love you guys, were, PCAR market. What's the white powder they were sending in envelopes that everybody thought that was oh, terrorist? Oh, so what was that? Yeah, called? the z- was uh, Xanthrax or. or anthrax, yeah. Anthrax, Xanthrax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, xanthrax yeah. is when you combine it with, like, Xanax <laughs> yeah, to go to sleep exactly. and kill yeah. yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> xanthrax. Could be the name of my new boat. <laughs> oh, man. The Xanthrax. Uh, Yes, the Miss Xanthrax. I love it. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's get to today's cars. You know, the other thing too is uh, <laughs> with, help us out, guys. Go on, as we mentioned, as we talked about the us. cars of the day. Uh, bid with us, and then go over to the platforms and say that you heard about the car on Bid Nerds. Uh, that yeah. really helps us be, out uh, in the comment awesome. section on Please the other do. platforms. Yeah. All right. So, uh, big car of the day today is this MFI. I mean, this is this is, is a superstar. So, oh, How man. do you not is- get? Bigger, better, badder than this. Is, are we looking at a quarter million dollar car? Are we looking at a car that's going to make a half million? What is up with this special thing right here? J- JP, I tell you, man, the, you know, I could spend the rest of the show just talking about this mm-hmm. car. Every once in a while, we cover a car that's like one of my all time favorites. And the Euro Carrera uh, absolutely is in my wheelhouse. It's on my short list. So here, what we're looking at is this. In 1973, it was the last year of the Long Hood uh, Type F, I think they used to call it, um, uh, Porsches. And Porsche made a homologation special called the 1973 2.7 RS Carrera. And the idea behind the Carrera is that it wasn't a slab side. The car had wider rear fenders grafted on. You and I saw that in, uh, where were we? Somewhere in the middle of the German countryside, right? What was the name of that place? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I don't. Um, Stiegel. 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 Und Stiegel, Stiegel, yeah, we got to visit the factory. Graft, yeah, they literally welded on the wings to a regular 911 uh, fender and created the Carrera hips for a car so that they could do staggered wheels. In other words, a thinner wheel in the front and a wider wheel in the rear to help with handling, to put down all that extra power. And, the, and a legend was born. They made this car for the road. Porsche had intended to build 500 copies of the 2.7 RS Carrera so that they could homologate it for sports car racing. And the uh, orders from around the world came in to the tune of 1,500 cars. So the intention to build 500 resulted in 1,500 cars. That motor was a 2.7 liter, which was bigger than the 2.4 liter in the in this S. Uh, and it had the mechanical fuel injection system, which created 210 brake horsepower and nearly 190 pound foot of torque, which I think is probably the more important number. Anyways, in the European continent in 1975, when the uh, or 1974, with the addition, with the introduction of the uh, G body and the accordion bumpers that we've come to know so well in the United States, they continued to offer that motor on the European career. While in the United States, with ever stringent, um, what is it, smog regulations and uh, and emissions rules and laws. Uh, we got a dumbed down career with the uh, more useful and cleaner burning CSI fuel injection. So our U.S. Carreras, although they had a 2.7 liter motor, uh, only made about 170 horsepower while the European cars continued to get this same motor. And that's what this car is here. They built these cars from 1974, 1975, and 1976. I think they made around 800 to 1,000 of them over three years. So by the numbers, any single year of the Euro Carrera is way rarer than the 73 2.7 RS of which they built 1500 of. So over three years, they built just about half of what they had built the previous car. These cars weigh only a teeny bit more than the 73s, believe it or not. Uh, and so with that exact same motor and drivetrain, these cars are fantastic performers and they have always brought a fraction of the value that the 73s have. So the 73 has become a legend with Porsche and we've seen values of those rise from you know, 300 grand up to like 600 grand. And a few years ago, they were bringing 800 to a million dollars for the nicest examples. And lightweights, the the ones that were really stripped out for racing, were bringing well over a million bucks. Prices have cooled down. And these 
kind of followed in the 2.7 RS's shoes. So these had the values of these had risen to over $400,000. But in the last couple of years, values have cooled down where they were nice ones were going for under 200 grand. But the market is enjoying a renaissance this spring and this summer. And we've seen values rise back up. This is a really nice example offered out of Tustin, California, showing 81,000 kilometers on the European odometer. That equates to 50,000 miles. We don't know if that's 50,000 miles or 150,000 miles. But this car looks like it's been refurbished. It looks like it's in excellent condition. Um, the photos are decent. And this is a really nice car that's very rare in this country. Uh, a fantastic performer. It's a collector grade car, and yet you could drive this car and keep up with anybody in a 3.2 Carrera. And if you really know what you're doing, you can show them your whale tail spoiler. I love this car. I can't say enough nice things about it. And I think this one's going to have a really good late flurry. JP, I think this car, I think it's safe to say this is a quarter million dollar car. I don't think it's going to bring 300,000, but it's sitting at over 200 grand with an hour and a half to go. Uh, again, it's in California, the Euro Carrera. I don't know really what else to say. I mean, this car is just as beautiful as any car on the planet. Um, I love the yellow tinted H4 headlights. I know, um, that's really cool. Huh? You know, and it, which is just, you know, and this orange colorway on the black with the cocoa mats and the matching luggage in the back. I mean, this just has it all and uh this is a dream car if there ever was one uh you know i know uh you know seinfeld says that the rs is the dead guy car you only get one when someone dies uh because that's <laughs> the only way someone ever gets rid of one uh and i gotta think that this is kind of a similar thing and for you know i i'd definitely rather have this one than the uh than the rs i know the rs is worth more uh but who cares this car in this colorway and all the things like this exact car is just the stuff dreams are made of um Groovy. Like, how, how much you know look here's a question for you would you yeah. rather own and drive something like this or a stinger you know, oh like, this yeah right yeah. i mean exactly yeah. unequivocally yeah. you don't yeah. even have to hesitate yeah. it's like that question yeah. once once it registers what the question is like oh this yeah. car for sure who cares if the yeah. singer's worth more this is the real yeah. deal singer is just a, a wannabe copy whatever of this it's trying it's not i mean look i'm not disparaging singers singers are magnificent and who doesn't want absolutely one of those? Yeah. uh but uh but you know this the singer is the copy this is the real deal um the, yeah the singer is a construed version of a fantasy of what all the best pieces of a porsche could have lived up to in the air-cooled era right that's yeah. what the singer that's what the singer professes yeah. and and to a degree and this is me talking and i love fancy stuff mm -hmm. you show up in a singer and you're basically it's like you open up your wallet you pull back your bank statement and you're like look i'm wealthy i mean yeah. it's just it's yeah. such a show-off exotic car yeah. This car is born of legend and yeah. I, you cannot, it's unmistakable DNA. I absolutely love it. I just, and these are great driving cars. JP, my M491, which may soon be your car, uh, <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a heavy car with those steel fender flares and the sunroof yeah. and, and on the AC. This car has a slick roof. Uh, it's got, you know, barely an aluminum, you know, little tiny thin wing on the back. Uh, of fenders and no AC. This is a lightweight car. You know, this is a probably sub 2,600 pound car with 210 horsepower. I mean, this thing really moves and it really handles. They, they're great cars. I can't say enough nice things about them. All right. Well, we uh, we do have uh, other cars to talk about. So let's Why? get to what we think. Why? I know, right? We don't ever, <laughs> I mean, we can just do every day of the week like we do uh, just talking yeah. about this car. Uh, what is this car going to hammer for today on, our okay. favorite, on Bring a Trailer? Well, Two more sentences. This car was sold new in Switzerland in 1975, was imported to California in 1976. This car has spent its life in California. It's offered out of Tustin, California, Southern California down there, very nice area. Um, what else can I tell you? Slick roof, uh, really nice car. I can't say enough my six about it. How much JP, time we um, got on it and how many two, bids are there? Uh, let's go. It is, oh, it takes my computer a minute uh, an hour and 20 to go it's mm. got two hundred and seven thousand dollars on uh a whopping like 40 oh, 45 bids jp wow. there is a ton of action on this car uh so i'm gonna say 250 grand for this one but it could bring more and the the price on this one rafi's got one in his garage in brisbane that i really really want and uh th it, this this result is going to make 
Rafi get 300 for his car and price it out of my wheelhouse. But anyway, yeah. here you go. 250 grand is my bid, JP. And I wouldn't be surprised if it goes right on by there to 260 or 280 or more. Yeah, I think this is going well in the threes. I'm going to bid three just to be conservative. I, I would, okay. I, I'm thinking that's a good, that's three, a good three and a half, I think is where this is going to go. Um, yeah, I mean, with what the, with what's going on right now, if an if an 82 SC is going to bring $90,000, this thing should be bringing half yeah. a million at this point. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get to some other cars, guys. That was magnificent. Make sure, again, uh, go on to BAT and uh, in the comment section of Bring a Trailer, make sure you mention that you saw this car on Bidners. Uh, yeah. All right, um, let's get, let's go, uh, let's, let's move something a little bit more mundane. How about this, uh, how about this Mercedes, uh, this beige Mercedes? I kind of oh, like this thing. Smoke so, silver. I love yeah. this car. Okay. JP, I bought one of these things and then traded cars with my dad. He had a 190E 2.3 16 valve, and I bought a 93 500E, and we swapped cars. This thing is badass. Offered out of Las Vegas, California with just hmm. 67,000 miles on the odometer is the Mercedes-Benz 1992 500E. This car has been in one family its entire life. It's offered in smoke silver with the parchment interior, which I like because it's got a black dashboard, black steering wheel, black center console, and black trim around the door pockets. Uh, this five liter V8 in the early cars, the 92s and the 93s, is good for a whopping 322 horsepower, but more importantly, 354 pound foot of torque. Now, this car receives legendary status because Mercedes-Benz asked their neighbors in Stuttgart at Porsche to help them figure out a way to shoehorn the five liter V8 out of the S-Class and SL Mercedes into their 300E W124 platform. Mercedes, uh, Porsche engineers, uh, came over and figured out how to get the car into that uh, front you know, hood and create a suspension system that would be dynamic and comfortable while still keeping, you know, preventing this thing from being a super front heavy pit. And they succeeded by all accounts. They flared out the front and rear wheel, creating a wider track to accommodate the motor. Uh, and then, of course, Porsche helped design the springs and struts and the, the geometry for the wishbone suspension. And these cars handle amazing. Uh, Jason Kamisa recently did an expose on the 500E, suggesting that when this car came out, and almost up to today, that it is the single greatest sports sedan the world has ever known. And having owned one and putting, I think we bought our car with like 145,000 miles on it, and when we let it go, it had like 135,000 miles on it. Uh, so we put like Wait, 90, it had fewer miles, miles on it when you uh, when you 45, bought it. 45 to 135. <laughs> Thank you, JP. Uh, we put about 100,000 miles on this car between me, my mom, and my dad. And uh, I'm telling you, the car was just amazing. I am hopeful to get another one in my garage someday soon. This is a beautiful example. I would forego that wing. I would get the flush mount headlights. Uh, and then I would just drive this car. They are absolute zingers. It will keep up with almost anything on a back road, and yet you could drive this car from Vegas to LA uh, and not be sore in the slightest. They're super comfortable, amazing cars that are sure one day some of these cars are going to bring $100,000, uh, but they're still relatively affordable. And with that in mind, our 67,000 mile one family example, JP, is sitting in Las Vegas with three hours to go at just $25,500. Uh, it makes you wonder if this car is even going to break 50 grand. And I, I think it's absolutely worth more than that. So this could be, a because of the color maybe, I think this could be a deal. So here's a nice one right in your backyard, John. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen one that wasn't black. Uh, we saw that yes. hammer, that AMG hammer the other day. Uh, yep. That thing went for, what, 80-something thousand dollars? That really surprised the heck out of me. No, the baby hammer went like yeah. 200 grand, remember? Oh, it was a 200 grand. Yeah, we'll see. There you yeah, go. Even at $80,000, yeah, yeah. I'm like, geez, what in the heck? So this this era of Mercedes is finally finding um, some respect. Uh, three hours to go on BAT, that's a long time. So we usually see most of the value come in that last hour or even 10 anyway, minutes. Yeah. So yeah. with that in mind... We're where do you think this one's going to land? Uh, should I be bidding on this today? I don't think I, I, I think it's going to go way past my budget. I would think so. Oh, John, my computer is just moving so slow. Please forgive That's me right. while I'm waiting for my thing to load. Uh, here we go. You know, I have an E430, uh, you know, Mercedes of the of the next era. It's the E430 Sport. And that thing really does handle well for how fat and heavy and, and bloated it is. Uh, but I don't, it's nothing like one of these, man. Yeah, I agree. All right, JP. So I think, I think this car 
should and will break 50,000. So I'm going to go 50, $6,000 and give you my bid right there. 56 grand to you. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it just barely makes 50. Uh, that's where I'm going to okay. be at. You know, I mean, I'm probably going to be really wrong. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all. I mean, that's more money than one of these has seen. Uh, this is low miles and things are wonky. So it's not going to surprise yeah. me to be wrong on this one. And I kind of well, hope I am because this car really does, I tell you does what, deserve. It, if you're watching when this thing is closing, if it's under 45 grand, you should cover it and, and get it and I'll split it with you and we'll, we'll make it work. That That's a All nice right. car. We can, All we right. can, we can, we can spend mid amount of money and make that car look a lot better. Take the stripe off the wing off, get the flush headlights and remarket this thing. And I think we do really well with it. It's a nice car. All right. Let's uh, speaking of cars that you want. And uh, well, this is one I don't uh, what you yeah. your gosh. Do, what is it with crappy <laughs> wagons? <laughs> At used car dealers that says Look at this. Michael so Beeb. Is, our, is this the this same is crappy same, car dealer? It's the same dealer. It's from Fairview, Pennsylvania. I don't know who so this the, guy is, but they got one on BAT and one. Is, is this BAT no, or is this? Both, oh, they're, no, both, they're both. Oh my god! Yeah, I think this guy married Doug DeMiro's sister, and that's why he's getting his cars right off his showroom and onto cars and bids. Um, I don't understand what's going on here, but this is a another crappy Audi JP. My computer's moving so slow. Uh, it's a 2003 Audi S6 Avant with 100 and something thousand miles on it. Um, same poor reconditioning. They didn't really clean this car up. Uh, but by all accounts, it's bone stock and it's still in nice condition. Black with the sort of silver interior. Uh, these cars have a 4.2 liter V8 that's normally aspirated and a quattro all-wheel drive system. This was Audi's first sport wagon sold in the United States that was a legit performer back in era. You know, 340 horsepower um, and I can't remember, 300 pound foot of torque or something. These things move. Five-speed automatic, really nice seats, Bose, and Bose sound system. Uh, comfortable for five adults, Alcantara headliner, 17 inch Avis wheels all the way around. This car kind of had the goods um, and Audi was enjoying a little bit of success at that time and they sold a few of these things. So um, they did not hold up well and they don't hold their value very well. This car is, you know, fair to good at best. It's not a great example, but you just don't see them every day. And it's certainly not modified, which a lot of them have either been lowered or they changed out the wheels and, and then they kind of screw them all up from there. Uh, I like this one because it's stock. I like it because it's black with a sort of light interior. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I see it, JP, at 135,000 miles uh, offered out of Fairville, Pennsylvania. Um, the car is sitting at just $5,200 on 16 bids. My bid to you is going to be ninety five hundred dollars. I don't think it brings ten grand, but I think uh, a few people might jump on this one before it closes. So, what do you think? Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, that one yesterday got almost ten thousand bucks, and it was, sure. uh, but that one had really low miles. Um, Forty seven thousand miles. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this one, I mean, these ri these really do rival Jaguars for poor reliability. Uh, I mean, at one hundred thirty five thousand miles, that's just like I don't know if you're going to make it home uh, it, before you get a you know really big bill. Um, I mean, Doug, I, didn't Doug Demuro drive over one of these like in his Land Rover or something? Uh, isn't that one of his famous videos? Like this thing is such I a piece know, of crap, man. and he loves these, but he's like, it's such a yeah. terrible vehicle, and he crushed it. I, I'm uh, the same way. I love it. I know it's a terrible vehicle, JP. When I met you, Esther and I moved out to Vegas. We we showed up with a BMW 3 Series, and this was Esther's car to take the dogs around, and she was driving it back home to the Bay Area. So I will say this. You're absolutely correct. It rivals a Jaguar for poor reliability. There was always a check engine light on. There was always a system that was failing. But the cars always got us home at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, and the AC blow, blew cold enough. So uh, they, you know, they're you they just good enough cars, if that makes any sense. Uh, mm. you know, It never stranded her in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but, man, my uh, Audi mechanic uh, up in the northeast, you know, the, the, the forbidden area of Las Vegas, and he loved us because every time we showed up, I had to give him, you know, a few hundred dollars to fix something for us. And we yeah. saw him regularly. So these were anyways. littered all over the side of the mountain as a, as a skier in Washington state. You just, I believe you. Yeah, well, sure. the thing I, the, the most interesting thing about this car is this one in the background. Is that a Subaru the SVX? Super, yeah. Look at that. Look this at guy. that. With the, with guy. the Japanese, uh, with the Japanese <laughs> license plate. If, is that a, if that car, if that car's right hand drive, that car is awesome. You know what I'm wow, saying? that is so rad. Uh, right. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you said what? Ten thousand bucks? Nine, 
9500 bucks. 9500 bucks. Uh where's it at now? It's at 5200 on uh 16 bit. So it's got a little action, Six grand. but not Six a lot grand. of money. Yeah. Six million. Okay. This thing's DOA. Nobody wants 135. If you, I mean, it is an S6. You're probably right. Some idiot on this site wants it. Hey, at least they don't have to get a loan for it. All right. Uh, what else we got? Let's uh, let's move on to something interesting. Okay. Which one? We got to we got to put a ban on the Audi wagons. Ban stick on the Audi wagons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know you that means you next week we're gonna have Andy wagons all week. You know he's gonna pick them. Absolutely. All right. How about a convertible? How about let's let's go see some. It's sunshine and just about everywhere. It's spring. The summer is sprung in America. So how about a convertible? JP, give me your bid again on the Audi. I'm sorry. Where were you at on that one? Oh, what I say? You know what? I thought I said. 6,500? I don't know. Somebody... 6,500? Okay. Yeah, some, maybe a, I'll yeah. give you 6,500. That's fine. All right. All right. And we're doing the uh, Honda S2000. Look at this thing. Yeah. JP, listen, we've done a bunch of S2000s. There's not a lot more to be said. These are fantastic cars. Hand-built motors by the Skunk Works uh, of the Honda crew. Um, and, you know, Honda kind of struggled to sell this car. You know, it made a big splash when it first got here. But then, you know, they had one significant update in its, in its entire life in the U.S. Uh, we never got any of the special versions, really, that they got over um, in Japan and maybe the rest of the, the world. Uh, but, you know, the moment the last one sold off the car dealership lots in like 04 and 05, uh, these cars went up in value. Now, so what we're looking at here is the first gen AP1 2001 S2000 with just 3.3 thousand miles on it offered out of southern Whoa. california santa monica california this car is essentially like new what you're talking about here is a two liter inline four that revs to 9,000 rpm through a six-speed manual transmission with a limited slip differential and no traction control there are no guardian angels to keep you safe it's just you know your courage and your skill are the only thing that's going to keep you prevent you from running this car off a mountain and into a ditch um this is just a really neat example. And let me tell you, uh, the red leather is very rare on these cars. In 2002, they did a full red interior that you and I both don't like when they do a red dash and a red steering wheel. That's too much. I love this 01 because it's got a black dash. It just has red seats and red carpets. So I'm telling you, JP, if I was going to get one, this is absolutely the car I would love to have. It's bone stock. It's in brand new condition. And it's got the really rare uh colorway with the red leather seats on this sort of uh you know medium ash gray uh metallic paint so beautiful example of an ap1 we've seen ap2 bring more money and we've seen club racers bring a hundred grand so this this car could be posed to either have an incredible late flurry and break fifty thousand dollars or it's going to fizzle out like most ap ones do and it'll hover somewhere in that forty thousand dollar range which is what the history of these cars including several examples sold this year on bring a trailer um so you know the real market value on this car is somewhere between like thirty five thousand and forty three thousand for cars that have you know six and seven thousand miles on bat uh, according to BAT's history. But this is one of the lowest mile examples and it looks to be in really nice condition with a special colorway. So John, what do you think? Would you uh, would you give it up for one of these guys? Man, this is the perfect car all around. Oh, I mean, it's a convertible. Absolutely. It's it's a it's a perfectly balanced sports car. There I mean, this is you can't, there's nothing better than this. I mean, obviously we love 911s and Porsches and everything, but um other than this car rivals anything Porsche has ever made. Uh, I mean, I would certainly drive rather drive this car than almost any Boxster, uh, other than <laughs> yeah. you know maybe a Spider or something like that. And that's not knocking Boxsters. I you know I don't I, I don't have any problem with it. But this car, the weight, the size, uh, the way they drive, uh, the the design, the minimalism that goes with this car. Hondas now, when you see a Honda, you like a new Honda Civic. I don't know what do they call them SIs or whatever. They just yeah. look like oh okay we got this radius and this and this little thing totally. over here and all I, it's just I all so this stupid plastic crap all over it and it's like it's hard to imagine that this is the same company i mean there are like there are no lines this is so this is more porsche than i think porsche is today like look at the new gt2 it's so stupid looking with all the ducks and the neck and the, and the air dams and the this and the that and the other um i just wish porsche would look at something like this car and remind them oh yeah things look really good when you settle the f down and just yeah. go with minimalism. Uh, this car got it right. Uh, it is basically the best 
uh, Japanese Porsche of all time. Uh, and with I, that I, red I agree interior. With you. And, and JP, when this car came out, I had the same argument in my head, but on behalf of Alfa Romeo. And I'm like, mm. Alfa Romeo is selling a a GTV Spider on the European continent that was front wheel drive and it didn't make mm. 200 horsepower. And they were like, this is the new, you know, version of the Duetto or the Spider. And yeah. I'm like, that car is absolute garbage. And here uh, the Japanese went and made a rear wheel drive, small motor, high revving manual transmission sports car. I'm like, why doesn't Alpha just buy this platform and rebody it with Pininfarina and then sell it with their name on it with a Japanese motor and just put an Alpha valve cover thing on there and you've got a 240 horsepower, 9,000 RPM Italian sports car made in Japan. I'm like, they would have sold a million of those cars. They would have sold more than Honda did. And, yeah. uh, you know, of course, they didn't call me and ask for my expert advice, but that's what I absolutely thought they should do. And I even thought, like, you know, you have those weird, like, lucid fantasies. It's like, just buy a red one and put alpha four-leaf clovers on the side. And nobody <laughs> yeah. would know, you know? Like, yeah. Nobody would know. You know, it's like, oh, my God. It, it's it's more, to me, it was more alpha than alpha. Yeah. And I love your argument. This this was a better boxster than the boxster. So uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, and, you know, I know we're going on and on and on. You see a yeah. lot of them in this color, but you never see them with that red and the black interior. Yeah. And that's just Look out. Is that hot? super, yeah, super cool. special. Uh, okay, yeah. so all that said, 3,000 miles, even if this thing were pur- purple polka dots uh, yeah. with, uh, you know, I mean, just whatever. This thing is going to go for big money. It has low miles. It's an S2000. It's an early one. Where's Where the heck is this going to land? So JP, I literally did this last night uh, before I sent you my notes. I I was looking it up on BAT, which I rarely do, but I I wanted Mm -hmm. to see what AP1s could possibly bring because we've seen AP2s bring big money. And even sales this year with sub 10,000 mile cars uh, were barely breaking 40 grand. Now, I'd like to think that the market is stronger today than it was even three months ago. You and I have seen other cars that kind of quantify that notion, Um, but it's hard to bet against the previous results in this moment. So I'm going to go 40 grand, but I agree with you. I think this car should be a 50 to $55,000 example. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does that, but right now there's nothing to support that. So I'm going to go 40 grand, but I'm hopeful that I'm wrong. I'd like to see them bring big money because AP ones deserve it. They're actually the better. They're the more raw driving experience with no gizmos, uh, quicker steering ratio, uh, shorter gear ratios. It is the more pure version. The AP twos, are a watered down version for everyday driving. But the AP1 is the real sports car. I think this should be worth more money and this is the one that should do it. But 40 grand's my bid to you. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think it is worth more. Uh, I'm going to go way the heck over. I'm not going to play it safe. I'm going to go 50,000 uh, nice. with the caveat that it's Cojones. probably going to go well into the 50s. 3,000 miles. There you I mean, go, man. This is, I agree. This is last, how many Good pictures, of, JP. You like these photos? Pretty decent. Perfect ad for a perfect car. This is this is a very nice. honest ad. You know, they took it at the right time of day. Uh, they're not trying to be cute. They're not overly artsy. Uh, this car, you know, it's just the only thing it's I would love to have seen is a driving video. A well done driving video yeah. really would have brought the romance because this car is all about that. And you know, I'm all about the romance. All right. Well, you know, let's go look at kind of the opposite of this car. One uh, more car. Yeah. Yeah, we've got one uh, that, uh, yeah, well, this isn't exactly a sports car, but you can have a lot of fun in one of these. How about this van? Oh, my gosh, a Eurovan. What is it, an 03 oh or something? I, I didn't miss that. It, I didn't even. It is. It is a 2003 Volkswagen Eurovan MV, uh, mm. and that's all it is. So, right, this is not a weekender. This is not a Westphalia. Uh, it's not an all wheel drive. This is just the 2.8 liter VR6 front wheel drive van with a four speed automatic, black with gray interior, offered out of Pompano Beach, Florida, with 170,000 miles on the odometer. Mm. The only two things that I could see that's worth bringing up for this conversation it does have a trailer hitch. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if this is common to all of them, but in this one, uh, the rear seats will fold flat so that you can create a bed in the back of the van. Um, I am probably just not as daring as everybody else as far as like uh, van life. I don't know that I want a Westphalia, even though my wife really wants a Westphalia. But here's a really nice example of just the, the most watered down version of the Eurovan uh, from 2003. So this is a no reserve auction JP and our car has under two hours to go it's sitting at 
$5,500 on 17 bids. Um, you and I are always very caution, uh, cautionary about cars offered out of Florida. This ad discloses that there are some issues with rust. Um, obviously, the normal wear and tear, but there's a, a few spots where there's rust, at least on the bodywork. I didn't really look underneath the car. So uh, with that in mind, JP, um, you know, tell us why these aren't 15, 20, 25, $30,000 vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I love this style. I mean, there's a lot to like on these things. This powertrain in this era uh, are plagued with a lot of problems. This era of Volkswagen had a lot of electrical issues and the transmissions aren't the most reliable. So I, you know, I would really caution someone on the mechanical side of this car to really look into see what kind of mechanical records are there. Uh, but I will say that, you know, from a functional point of view, if you just want something to go and do the weekend, camper thing uh this may be better than a weekender a weekender the only difference between a weekender and this car is that the weekender has the pop top um all vanigans all euro vans have that fold down rear uh rear seat that makes it into a bed uh so it doesn't matter what version it is so there you can see that uh the thing that this one has and uh, the later era had uh that's better than the earlier ones most of the most of the euro vans had a center like a two-person center seat that could be removed moved which was kind of nice but these are even better because they have the uh rear facing center seats uh and then you've got this little fold-up table uh so that's right. really really table. cool yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm not sure if uh you know some of them have those rear facing seats that you can remove and then the front seats are captain's chairs and they swivel around i don't oh, think cool. that's what yeah, yeah. That, that's something that you really want to look for uh but from a functional point of view uh in a lot of ways i like something like this better than a westie because you don't don't have all that weird plumbing from the kitchen and and the and the propane lines and all that. you just don't need any of that junk uh, you know all that yeah. stuff was you know do you really want camping gear and rv gear from two th the year 2000 i mean that stuff's like 20 something years old uh you're way better off to have something like this build your little camp you know and who wants to Sorry. cook in inside the van with the roof i mean this like, what you want to be outside cooking over the fire or have a you know a, a yeah. portable stove on a table and stuff like that you can go down and get yourself all kinds of really cool camping gear and kit this thing out and save yourself probably ten thousand dollars on the price because these don't really right. bring nearly as much money now for someone like you and your lovely wife esther who uh have uh dogs that are not small um <laughs> the pop top thing is definitely cool because yeah. you guys can climb up there and the dogs can take downstairs uh you guys are going to be snug as bugs in a rug uh if yeah. all four of you uh are down sure. this thing um you know so there you have it Get maybe i don't know yeah, there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. Um, yeah, I'm more concerned about the mechanicals of this car than I am really the aesthetic funk aesthetics of it because this the great thing about this is you could take it out on the beach and get sand in it and just beat the living crap out of it. Who cares if your dogs just roach the interior because whatever, it's a camper van, it's functional. This was just built to be uh, you know, a family minivan, really. Um, yeah. Where do we think it's going to land? All right, JP, offered out of Pompano Beach, Florida with... Uh, Let's see, an hour and 40 minutes to go. Uh, our Eurovan with 170,000 miles, Carfax shows that it's had two minor accidents in its history and there's some rust in the fender wells and the windshield surround. So this is not a long-term investment, but this would be a fun car for a few years, especially if you could steal it or rip it at a value price, which I think is gonna happen here. Uh, on 17 bids with an hour and 40 to go, it's at $5,500. Uh, I think this car will probably get to no reserve auction, so it's gonna sell. Hmm. I, I really want to believe this car is going to bring $10,000, but I might be smoking grass. I don't know. What do you think? I, am I just way your, too high? Is, is that your yeah, number? 10, no, yeah, $10,000. Go I'm. That's kind of, that was going to be my number. I mean, it's cars okay. and bids. If this were BAT, I would say for sure it would bring 10, maybe 11 or something like that. Um, yeah. But since it's cars and bids and we don't see late stage rallies, uh, I'm going to okay. bid the under and say nine. Um, nine. Okay. But I think, you know, it's, we, this could be a draw right here. Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, not a lot of money for something that's really, really functional. So anyways, uh, all right, uh, Vacation Deeb. Oh, you, I got to go uh, drink, man. It's been an hour. Play. Yeah, go I drink some more pina, pina coladas. coladas. Oh. What the heck? You, gotta, you, should be, you should have an IV drip of those things. Uh, is, all right. Is Lane, is Lane watching the show? Lane, I have to travel tomorrow. You don't get tomorrow off, but you got to be on the show. Come on, man. Oh, man. Uh, he's traveling somewhere now, too. Um, is he really? Oh, okay. Make sure, again, guys, go to Bring a Trailer, go to Cars and Bids, and in the comment sections, let 
them, let the comments, let, bleh, let the other people uh, looking at the five cars that we've looked at, the the, the MFI Carrera, this Eurovan, the S2000, mention in the comments that you saw those cars on uh, the Bid Nerds and, and, yeah, and on spread YouTube. the word, man. And then give us yeah. your bids on the five cars. And if you beat either one of us, we're going to get you a hat. Swag. Uh, swag. And that's only on YouTube. We're not doing all that on Facebook. So uh, the comments uh, that were given away, the hats are only on YouTube. Uh, there are, we are, there are audio versions of this on podcast platforms as well. Uh, we will not be checking those for your bids. We're only looking for comments in the YouTube section. So check us out over the YouTube section. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. So, you know, when the freshest nerds are available, Michael Deeb, it's been uh, uh, great sharing your vacation with you. Go have some more pina coladas. Uh, we yep. will see you next week. We'll be back tomorrow with a guest host uh, yet to be determined. Oh, oh wait, it's going to be a big thing. Uh, uh, and uh, there it is. Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting cars today. Anything else you want to say, Michael Deeb? Cool cars tomorrow. Three Porsches tomorrow and a Saab and a Subaru. Tomorrow will be a good show. Uh, sorry to miss it, but hopefully uh, somebody will step in and take my place. Be deep for a day. No! Get those nerds!